Test three. Summarize spoken text. Page one hundred and eight. One. Well, nowadays there is an increasing trend toward ecotourism holidays. So, what is ecotourism? Well, it's a form of tourism which should not only protect but also actively improve our environment and its cultures. However, many forms of tourism which are presented as sustainable, nature-based, and environmentally friendly are often not what they seem, and this is rapidly becoming a somewhat thorny issue. Governments, as well as the tourism industry, promote ecotourism, but there are very well-founded concerns that, in many instances, it not only lacks adequate scientific foundations. But is also not viable as a solution to the world's social and environmental problems, which, of course, is what ecotourism is supposed to be about. Many ecotourism holidays are really nothing more than a marketing ploy, and indeed, in the worst cases, can be said to even threaten local cultures, economies, and natural resource bases. The issue is further confused by the multitude of terms to describe types of travel which supposedly protect the environment. Other than ecotourism, we have adventure travel, sustainable tourism, responsible tourism, nature-based travel, green travel, and cultural tourism, to name just a few. So the problem we have here is whether a potential traveler who wants a legitimately environmentally friendly travel experience can make the right choice when confronted with this type of marketing. Well, what I want to focus on now is climate change. More specifically, on the fact that climate change is a result of human activities. Now, there has been some disagreement regarding the extent to which human activity can be blamed for climate change. But I want to argue that there is evidence which clearly demonstrates that our own actions really are causing a genuine threat. The available evidence seems to indicate fairly conclusively that land and sea temperatures started to increase around 200 years ago. So, what's the significance of this? Well, 200 years ago roughly coincides with the beginning of the industrial revolution in the northern hemisphere. In other words, this was when our production of harmful gases really got going as a result of increased industrialization. Since that time. Our production of gases has accelerated due to the fact that not only has industry grown in size, but it has also now spread to the southern hemisphere. Indeed, most parts of the world. So, in the last two hundred years, as industry has grown, we can see a gradual rise in the temperatures, which, to my mind, is sufficient proof of the damaging effect of our actions. And needless to say, it's an issue which we need to address. Test three, multiple choice. Choose multiple answers. Page one hundred and nine. One. I'd like to start this lecture on the use of technology in education by talking about a subject that's probably close to all your hearts, which is the way that student work is graded. And specifically, I want to talk to you about some of the ways written assignments or essays are marked. Well, as you all know. Traditionally, writing done by a student is checked, marked, and graded by a teacher, a tutor, or, in some situations, an examiner. In other words, a real person. Software to mark essays has been in development for some time, and grading software on computers is already used by some universities to mark exams. But it is still viewed with suspicion by some. How can a computer mark an essay? They ask. Well, a recent study compared the human ability to give grades to student essays to the ability of a computer to do the same job. In the study, over sixteen thousand essays were used. These essays had already been previously marked by at least one trained human grader. The study showed that the essay marks given by the computer software were almost the same as those from human graders, which I think you'll agree is a controversial result. And it's likely to make us as teachers reevaluate how we grade written work. Two. 
A further example of endangered species is the shark. Around 40 million sharks are killed each year. That's quite a lot. Consequently, the number of sharks is decreasing. So let's take a closer look at the causes of this. Firstly, in recent decades, sharks have become important. This is largely due to the growing popularity in some parts of the world for the consumption of shark. It has become a very valuable food source. OK, so maybe you're thinking, well, lots of other fish like cod, salmon or tuna are caught for human consumption and they aren't disappearing at the same rate as sharks. Well, that's true, but the difference here is sharks are not able to repopulate or reproduce themselves quickly like the other types of fish that are commonly fished as a food source. Why? Because sharks are slow breeders. Sharks mature slowly and it takes them years to reach the age for egg production and then they produce only a few eggs, so that means just a few new sharks. Humans have a nine-month pregnancy or gestation period, whereas some shark species are thought to have extremely long gestation periods, as long as three years. This makes them much more vulnerable and in danger of dying out than many other fish species. Test 3. Fill in the blanks. Page 110. 1. To be honest, the biggest problem for most undergraduate students in terms of academic writing is not only adapting to a far more structured and formal style, but also learning how to ascertain the difference between important, valid information and unnecessary or even irrelevant material. In my experience, I would say it takes students their first year, if not longer, to appreciate what is required and to start to implement those requirements in their writing. What they really should be doing, if they are struggling with written assignments, is to seek help from the excellent support services which are available at the university. An important question about education is then, why do some types of student achieve success easily and others struggle to do well? Well, one theory is that there's a genetic reason for academic achievement. What I mean by that is a certain innate, measurable level of intelligence. Another frequently discussed theory is environmental factors, such as the effect of home and family upbringing. A final reason is related to the teaching and learning process within educational institutions and the way it is organised, administered and assessed. Test 3. Highlight correct summary. Page 111. 1. Genealogy can be defined as the compilation of information necessary to construct what is usually known as a family tree, our pedigree, or our ancestry. It is a chart which shows the relationships between individual people in an extended family over a period of time. The first records of genealogy can be traced back to the earliest civilizations in northern Africa, who recorded successions of dynasties and wealthy families reaching back hundreds of years. This was usually done to establish rights to title, land and property. There is evidence that this happened in many places in the world. However, it was the domain of the wealthy and few people outside those circles were even aware that family ancestry could be recorded and traced. This situation changed in the early 19th century when genealogy became more generally well known after the first practical guide to research was published. But it was not until the mid-20th century that family history was no longer solely devoted to tracing the genealogies of the great, the wealthy or the famous, and it became a more common activity among the general population. Two. 
As you know, there has been an unresolved debate as to when and why early humans first started to use fire. However, recent new findings from a study in South Africa have been the talk of the anthropological community. So, what are these findings? Well, prehistoric ash and the remains of burnt bones are evidence that early humans used fire much longer ago than previously envisaged. 300,000 years earlier than believed, in fact. Scientists have found evidence of multiple fires, ash and bones, deep inside a cave, which means it is highly improbable the fires were started naturally. One question that still remains unanswered is why they were using fire. Some researchers are citing the burnt bones as proof that our ancestors cooked the meat, but it has also been suggested they ate the meat raw and then tossed the bones into the fire. Test 3. Multiple choice. Choose single answer. Page 113. 1. So, I want to discuss dissertations now. Our experience is that final year undergraduates and master students can struggle to find a suitable topic for their dissertation. Often, they're not able to come up with a viable or suitable area to research. Another problem may be that the topic they choose is too broad and needs to be refined. So, anyway, eventually their proposal is submitted and approved. But then, after some background reading or a deeper consideration of research methods, they may well want to modify their original proposal to some extent. Well, that's fine. We expect modifications as the work progresses. This is normal. What we don't want to happen is that the student repeatedly wants to completely change the whole approved topic or original proposal to something completely new, and that does happen at times. Two. Art therapy can be defined as a form of psychotherapy which uses art as its main means of communication. Patients needn't have any particular talent in art since the art therapist is not concerned with making an assessment of what the patient produces. The principal aim of this kind of therapy is to facilitate the patient's well-being in order to bring change and growth on a personal level through the use of art materials. Obviously, as always, the relationship between the therapist and the patient is important, but art therapy differs from other psychological therapies because it's a process between the patient, the therapist and the art. So what we found is the expressive nature of this therapy is particularly successful with those who have difficulty expressing themselves verbally. Okay, so the date of the invention of the first clock is disputed among historians, but it's agreed that the first method for telling the time was the movement of the sun across the sky. When the sun was directly ahead, it was midday, and when it was on the horizon, it was early morning or early evening, according to whether it was in the east or the west. However, this method was problematic in terms of accuracy. But nevertheless, it's been used for countless years, from early humanity to... Test 3. Highlight incorrect words. Page 115. 1. One of the most encouraging phenomena in recent years has been the growth of lifelong learning in the education sector. Nowadays, students are embarking on courses at all ages. Higher education is no longer seen as a place for the young. Mature students are appreciated and valued. Recent research has also indicated that older students are enthusiastic learners, able to contribute a number of skills and attributes gained from work, family and other life experiences.
2. Conducting a video conference is now a popular means of communication in the business world. This telecommunications technology allows two or more locations to communicate by simultaneous video and audio transmissions. It's designed to serve conferences or meetings in multiple locations. The advantages are obvious. No more lengthy phone calls or complex correspondence with business contacts, partners, or offices overseas. This relatively low cost, fast, effective communication method has made significant inroads in not just a business context, but also education, medicine, and media. Test 3. Select missing word. Page 114. 1. So, just a few weeks ago, excavators of a remote archaeological site in southeastern Asia reported an exciting find under the ground. They found evidence of a writing system which dates back thousands of years. Three blocks of flat rock with odd symbols which look like ancient forms of writing were discovered. Well, this find could reveal much about an advanced, independent, urban culture which historians believe may have lived in that area. However, many scholars are skeptical about the authenticity of the blocks, which they suspect. Test 3. Write from dictation. Page 116. 1. You can request library books by using the electronic catalogue. Two. Coursework and exams will form part of the annual assessment. Three. There are new innovations in the field of digital architecture. 